we've spent our recent studies on the appendicular skeleton and we come uh, on into the axial skeleton which includes the head and the spine. When you were in your mom's uterus you had one primary curve and then as you matured you formed secondary curves. So the primary curves are the the thorax and the sacrum. The secondary curve, you know, when you were in your crib or down on the floor and you were lifting your head, that started the formation of the cervical secondary curve. And then as you got upright and began to walk, the lumbar curve uh, was formed. And so lumbar, cervical are secondary curves, thoracic and sacral are primary curves. And then it's way good to remember the anatomy of the individual vertebrae. This, this actually is a uh, lumbar vertebra. You know that the centrum or the vertebral body, the transverse processes, spinous processes, process rather, and then uh, the lamina and the pedicles. Those will come into play uh, when we talk about uh, surgical procedures for um, uh, re reduction or discectomy. Uh, we'll talk about uh, that along the way. And then the specialized vertebrae, you know that the atlas and axis of, uh, I should say, the atlas and axis are specialized. The uh, atlas holds the uh, occipital bones of the skull. So here are two little hands that uh, fossae that receive that. And then the dens of C2 fits up into uh, C1. You can see this articular uh, surface that receives the dens. So in flexion and extension primarily that's skull and C1 and then rotation happens C1 and 2. And then uh, the features of um, the um, lumbar and uh, the thoracic vertebrae. I want, to, I want you to appreciate in this Here's transverse process, here's spinous process. Well, each um, vertebra has articular process, uh, processes left and right. Here, um, and um, there's, there's two inferior and two superior. And where these articulate forms the, the set joint. So here's two articulating vertebrae. And the superior articular uh, process on this side articulates with the inferior articular process of the vertebra above it, forms the facet joint. Talk to you a little bit more about that later. When we were talking about the, uh, the pelvis interface of appendicular skeleton and axial skeleton, we talked about the SI joint. Here's the symphysis pubis, uh, the innominate bones, uh, pubis, um, ischium and iliacus on one side, and then uh, the articulation of the spine, the sacral uh, spine into the um, <clears throat> into the yeah the sacral spine, articulating with the uh, with the pelvis. Uh, the ligamentous um, guardians or tethers of uh, the vertebrae and the anterior longitudinal ligament runs all the way from the cervical down to the thoracic spine. It's a thin um, sheeting of ligament, obviously, that prevents or slows down. I'll say prevents hyper uh, extension of the spine. The PLL looks more like uh, the size of this pointer, and it runs through the uh, foramen between the uh, uh, the, ver the vertebrae, the intervertebral or the uh, vertebral foramen rather. So sorry, and then uh, there's ligamentous uh, tissues between the transverse processes, and um, also. Uh, when you see deep in here, the ligamentum flavum uh, is ligamentous support uh, between the vertebrae. <clears throat> Here's another view of the ALL, <clears throat> number one, and the PLL. You have to do a pedalectomy, cut through the pedicles to find the uh, 
PLL. It looks like, like I said, it kind of the consistency or uh, uh, specifications of this pointer, whereas the ALL is a sheet of um, almost like here's the vertebrae and that ALL is woven into the periosteum of those vertebrae. And you can appreciate that when this driver was rear-ended, the initial action is to hyperextension. Well, it would be the ALL that would be challenged, um, sprained. Then the reaction would be the person would move into hyperflexion, and the PLL would be challenged. And then it's way good to know that on dissection, if we if we take off the skin, there are uh, fascia that help hold us together. Uh, this can either be called the lumbosacral fascia or the thoracosacral fascia, major stabilizer. You can see how the lats use that fascia uh, for tendinous purposes. And then the ligamentum nuque, you can remember when you dissected the cat that it was very difficult dissection here very rarely use the scalpel in dissection, but here, in order to cut through the ligamentum nuque, this is very dense tissue. And then to review the um, anatomy of the intervertebral disc, the, um, the uh, annulus fibrosus is a dense fibrous uh, cartilaginous outer portion of the pillow, and the um, the nucleus pulposus, which is really fluid, fluid-like until we get into our 40s, and then the whole thing begins to dry, and that's why uh, disc injuries are more common in uh, uh, with advancing age because we we lose the water content here. <clears throat> here are um, I'm going to let you study this on your own on the the uh, PowerPoint that's available to you. Um, but here are different manifestations of pathologies. This is deterioration. You can see where the edges of the bones are uh, jagged. This indicates a degenerative uh, arthritic condition. And then different uh, degrees of discogenic um, uh, herniations. And when this pushes into the intervertebral foramen, Here's the disc that's bulging. There's pressure on the spinal nerve root, and this person will have sensory and motor uh, symptoms as a result of this. This is a disc replacement and uh, a spacer. Uh, if the person loses uh, or ruptures, herniates their disc, this vertebra sits down, this intervertebral foramen gets smaller, there's pressure on the nerve root, and the person is got tons of symptoms, very disabling. I want you to know that back spasms are a symptom of a pathology, but not specific to a pathology, but this person, uh, the person who would have this circumstance where there's encroachment and stenosis of the uh, the uh, spinal nerve root will have uh, numbness and tingling, that's sensory, or they'll have weakness in their muscles or atrophy in their muscles as a result of that. And then um, <clears throat> I want you to be aware that it's not inevitable. Three generations, uh, daughter, mom, grandma, uh, but what happens in this progression is that there are compression fractures that end up wedging the um, vertebral uh, bodies, the centrums. Uh, as this person gets more and more, as I'll just say, as this person gets more and more into a gravity dependent position, there's pressure uh, here and the bone collapses, compression fracture like. And then postures of the spine, a hyper lordotic, lordotic curve, a scoliotic curve. Um, this is the classic test to ferret out scoliosis. Now you're not going to miss this. You're not going to miss this, but if there's a subtlety having them bend over and if one rib cage rides higher than the other, that's scoliosis. If, that's why we ought to do postural checks in, with children who are um, 
uh, in growth spurts. And so pre-adolescent, early adolescent, um, for sure, because kind of like a, an immature tree, if it begins to bend, if we can catch it and, uh, you know, manipulate it back with bracing, used to be called the Milwaukee brace, but it's a distraction brace that fits down on the iliac crest, and there's serial stretching that affects um, a realignment of the spine. And then there are two conditions you'll study uh, in uh, KPE 280 and then on into your advanced studies in the spine that you need to be aware of. Um, spondylolisthesis and spondylolysis. Uh, spondylolysis is where there's actually a fracture through the neck of the pars articularis. And uh, both of these conditions are a result of hyperextension. This man spends a lot of time in forceful hyperextension. Spondyl means vertebra. Spondyl spondylolysis is how you pronounce it. Lysis means to break or to cleave. So this is a fracture of the vertebra. Okay. Spondylolisthesis is actually where there's a displacement. You can imagine the uh, compressive force on the spinal cord and uh, this person uh, will have an anteriorly rotated pelvis they'll have an all, and they'll just be in uh, terrible um, um, spasms in their low back. Actions at the spine, I'm quite sure you have this down. Flexion, hyperflex, uh, 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 flexion, hyperextension, a lateral flexion, and rotation, all three uh, cardinal planes. And we'll stop there. That's kind of the osseous, um, uh, um, non-dynamic uh, tissues, the inert tissues, and I'm going to pick back up then with the dynamic tissues, the spinal muscles uh, from uh, superficial to deep. So pick me back up on the, uh, on the next um, video. Bless you.